Yeah? Yeah. Hello there. This is How to Make Dinner. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like dinner, you should come back every Wednesday. There's lots of great tips, easy strategies, recipes, and just general advice on how to cook better dinners. Today we're making Shopska salad, which is a very famous Bulgarian salad. If you're wondering why I'm making this, I'm not Bulgarian. My boyfriend is though. And we have lots of conversations about Shopska salad and the difference between that and Greek salad. It's pretty darn similar if you ask me. And there's a few highly contentious items that we're gonna get through in this episode, which I feel like might cause a little bit of commotion in the comments section. <laughs> so starting the Shopska salad off with a red onion. I only need a little bit because onions strong. So I'll just cut like the little edge off the side here. So the main star of Shopska salad, I think, as with Greek salad is tomatoes. So I would never make this if it wasn't tomato season. Like this is not something to bring to Christmas dinner. This is a summertime thing. So red onion, I'm gonna thinly slice it because that's how I like my red onion. I know we've all had salads like this where we've chomped into a giant cube of red onion. Not a fan personally, but you know, the choice is yours. And then I've got this beautiful beefy heirloom tomato. So we're lucky enough in May that some of our local growers have greenhouses that produce really good tomatoes already, even though it's not late summer yet. So I'm gonna cut this guy into some nice big chunks. And I actually like to use a mix of tomatoes if I have. So I've got this big heirloom one, but I also have some little cherry tomatoes here. And I think that'll be a nice little variety. And the key here is I'm not going super tiny with these guys. They're giant chunks because I like to sink my teeth into a giant chunk of tomato. I don't want, I don't really want uniformity here. I kind of want to enjoy each thing for what it is. In contrast to the minestrone soup episode from last week, where I wanted everything really tiny so that it would be like uniform bites on my spoon. With this, I prefer bite variety over bite consistency, if you will. <laughs> that was a little shout out to Dan Pashman of The Sporkful, which I doubt he watches this show. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, now I'm just jabbering on because we're cutting tomatoes and it's taking a few minutes. But it's a loving process. And you should always have snacks when you're making this. Next I have peppers. Any kind of peppers will do. I kind of like these little guys because um, they're pretty cute. And they don't have a lot of seeds. You can actually just kind of yank the seeds out like that. And uh, they're really sweet. They kind of look like hot peppers, but they're not. But I think traditionally it's a green pepper that's used for this salad. So that's controversial item number one, green peppers. Do they have a place in the culinary world? I think yes, but it's a very small place. <laughs> I like green peppers in a very specific um, application, which is tomato sauce, like a meat, meaty spaghetti sauce. I love the flavor that green pepper does to that. But I've, uh, I've had these arguments with people a lot. A lot of people say there's no room for green pepper ever. I disagree. But in this salad, I think it's a bit harsh. I kind of want the sweetness of a more of a ripened pepper. So keeping with the kind of chunky vibe, I'm just gonna do one slice across these guys. And gonna be great. I feel like it, there are times in the summer when I eat nothing but 
this kind of salad. Greek salad, Shopska salad. Okay, cucumber. So I want to take this opportunity to talk about com computers. <laughs> I, want to, I want to take this opportunity to talk about cucumbers for a minute. Now, another little tidbit that I've picked up recently has been that a peeled cucumber tastes a hundred times more cucumbery than a non-peeled cucumber. And I've kind of aligned this with, I've seen this trend of like smashing cucumbers. I don't know if you've seen that, like smashed cucumber salad and that kind of thing. The reason is because cucumber has a really strong flavor. It's very cucumbery. If you put a slice of cucumber into water, it's like, whoa, it's very, very strong. Um, but the peel of the cucumber, although it's green and healthy and it'll whatever, be extra fiber, I don't actually care. What I care about is the flavor of a cucumber. So getting rid of that peel exposes so much more cucumber flesh and it just makes the cucumber taste better. Straight up. That's controversial item number two. <laughs> you can, I would love it if you would battle it out in the comments actually. Need a little, need a little action down there. <laughs> um, okay, so chunky again. Everything's like really rough here. So where are we at? So far, everything's looking pretty Greek salad-y. Where we are gonna take a bit of a departure from the Greek vibe though, is we're not putting dried oregano, which I see a lot. Uh, that's normally what you put in Greek salad. Instead, we're gonna use some fresh parsley. And I'm gonna use a fair bit here because I like it. And Shopska salad, people think it's really old, but actually we just learned recently that um, it was actually invented in this in like 1960 by this uh, like communist run Bulgarian tourism board where, you know, they run all the restaurants and resorts and things. So they actually invented this salad and it's based around the colors of the Bulgarian flag. Um, but yeah, so it's not that old. It's like 1960, pretty new. Okay, so cukes, tomatoes, onions, peppers, parsley. Controversial item number, I have lost count, three, four maybe? I'm not gonna use extra virgin olive oil in this. I'm actually gonna use sunflower oil. I'm choosing a really nice, high quality sunflower oil, like a first cold pressed whatever, not just like your, your crappy jug. It's very neutral, there's no flavor to this. And that's kind of why we're using it because we're not wanting to add any olive flavor. That's basically all. So, a little bit of sunflower oil and fat the the job that fat is doing in the salad is to try and is to kind of like it's just being a very good vehicle for flavor so it's just helping everything kind of come together and it's giving things kind of like a good silky i don't know i hate the word mouth feel <laughs> but i know that that's what it is anyway we'll just glaze over that and then the next thing is salt. So I'm not using vinegar either. This is super controversial and I'm borderline a little bit like, I'm not 100% sure about this move, but apparently certain people think, or was it your grandma that said that? Certain grandmas <laughs> say that if there's a tomato involved to never ever put vinegar. It shouldn't have vinegar because it's, taking away from the sweet acidity of the tomato. So I'm just gonna listen to grandma's advice right now and do that. But that means that we need more salt to, to really give that kind of punch and pull all the flavors out. So a few good pinches of salt and that's it. And we're gonna toss it up. This, by the way, I've seen recipes that are like, leave it in the fridge for an hour. I would never do that. I do not like refrigerated tomatoes. I like room temperature tomatoes so that they're really bursting with flavor. And then 
We'll just throw that on a plate. I mean, if you're gonna leave it to sit, to have the flavors marry or whatever, I would leave it for up to an hour or more, but I would never put it in the fridge. So just leave it out. So the final thing, once it's on the plate, is feta. And I'll never toss the feta in because I don't like when the juices get all milky. I like it to be a separate thing. So the feta is going in on top. And this is my favorite feta, Bulgarian feta from, well, is it actually? Yeah, oh, it's from Montreal or it's imported in Montreal. Anyway, this is my favorite feta, Bulgarian feta. It's so good. It comes in this beautiful tin and it's very milky and soft. And it's just like, whew, look at that. So good. You cannot have too much feta. I think that's important to remember. I wasn't sure. I mean, the jury's out on whether or not olives are a part of Shopska salad, but we have them, so we're gonna use them. And that's it. And now let's have a bite. It's kind of a mess though, is that okay? Mm. So it's just tomato freshness. There's nothing, actually you're right. The vinegar and the olive oil have a flavor of their own. And this is kind of doing away with all that. You're really relying on the salt and the feta and the sweetness of the tomatoes to kind of carry most of the heavy lifting in the salad. And it's totally working for me. Mmm. Mmm. So good. This is the bomb. This is very delicious salad. That's it for today. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy making Shopska salad. Let me know how you feel about the sunflower oil versus olive oil, the no vinegar thing, and the cucumber peeling. Those are, uh, those are big issues and I, I'd like to make sure that we cover them in, in this episode. So let's talk about it. Have a good week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Do I have parsley in my teeth? No? Is that a no? <laughs>